hot comic book movie news Shooting up your butthole The Weekly Planet, The Weekly Planet Welcome back everybody to another episode of The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday, and with me as always is my co-host, is that one Nick Mason I spy over there? <laughs> you you definitely spy me with your little eye. Thank goodness. Your one little eye. Oh, my one little eye, that's right. Mm. Uh, big week this, mate. Big week, big big week, Mason. <laughs> Want to start again? No. Okay, News great. wise, we are we are high as a kite. We're both we're both eating low calorie ice cream. <laughs> Just, yeah, ninety calories a pop, mate. Oh my god, and that's Filled right. With ninety calories worth of energy, this one's going to be wild. It's all you need. <laughs> uh, there are time codes below, of course, because uh, Collins who edits this puts them in every week. We're going to talk about the Will Smith backlash, if oh. you will, Mason. We're going to talk about method acting. Oh. We're going to talk about some Fast 10 casting, some uh, some Thor 4 leaks. Mm. Uh, we're also going to talk I about... I think they should call that movie Fast 10, Your Butthole. <laughs> Fast in, With what? I don't know. Like a glue gun? Yeah, maybe a glue gun. <laughs> I don't like that. Yeah. Some th- Bit of a twist because everybody says Fast 10, your seatbelt. That's good. We all, that's we all have a good fun. laugh. No, no, that's what I would say. Some Spider-Man 4 news, the Raimi one, that is. Mm. Uh, what is Robert Downey Jr. doing? Oh, our famous segment, what's Robert Downey Jr. What's doing? What's he going to do? What's he going to do? Uh, and then, of course, uh, oh, there's some there's some t- terrible Ezra Miller news. Oh, boy. Uh, well, not really, just an extension of the news last oh, week. Oh, okay, right, And, right. of course, that leads into Fantastic Beasts, Secrets of One Dumbledore Brindlebird. What's his name? What's his full Albus Dumbledore. Dumbledore Brindlebird. Yeah, our yes. favourite movie of this and probably any year from now, from here on out. Yeah, it'll all be... I'll be downhill after this, I think. Yeah. It's hard yeah. when you hit the peak of cinema, isn't it? Isn't it, though? <laughs> anyway, if you want to jump to that, you can, because as mentioned, there are time codes. But let's start off with Will Smith being banned for 10 years mm-hmm. from the Academy and going to the Oscars and looking at the Oscars, but he gets to keep his Oscar. That's terrific. This is the quote from them. During our telecast, we did not adequately address the situation in the room. For this, we are sorry. This is an opportunity for us to set an example for our guest viewers and our Academy family around the world. <laughs> and we fell short, unprepared and unprecedented. So there you go. Wow. Ten years. Uh, fine, whatever. That's fine, isn't it? It's not much of a punishment. Yeah. I mean, what else could they do beyond that? <laughs> yeah. They're the Academy. Exactly. They're not the police. Wow, now you've got, now Will Smith has like 30 hours of free time over the next <laughs> 10 years. So. What's he going to do with it, do you reckon? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah, maybe yeah. restart his rap career. Maybe he could. It's been a long time. Uh, but speaking of something which has also taken a hit, a number mm-hmm. of his movies has been put on hold. A number of his movies has been put on That's hold. That's right. Bad Boys 4, for example. Oh, yeah. didn't know it was happening. No, me neither. He has a Netflix movie called Fast and Loose okay. where Will Smith uh, is a crime boss who is experiencing memory loss and he later learns about his double life and that he is actually an undercover agent. Whoa. Wow. So he was a double agent. He started as a cop and then he... No, he was a crime boss, but he was also a, a double agent and an, uh, and an undercover agent and he has memory but loss. But that's what I'm saying. So he did he work his way up to being... A crime boss? Did he start as a cop and then he became... I don't know. Like he became a double agent, but then he worked his way all the way to the top? This movie they've delayed. You're asking me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm asking you for the finer plot details no, of this I, movie I that you've it, never heard of and is now delayed. I just think it's a big year for movie uh, for movies and TV shows memory loss. You know, obviously yeah. we've got Secrets of Dumbledores. Yep. Mm-hmm. Obviously we've got the, the show Severance. Yes, obviously sir. we've got the show uh, uh, Moon Knight. There's a lot mm. of memory loss happening. Yeah, absolutely. Our recaps are still going on. Collins yeah. is editing those also. Uh, Bright 2, what does that mean? Who knows? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> there was well, there, there was another bright thing recently, like an animated something. No, I think there was another live action bright thing that can. It's on be Netflix. True. I'm going to look it up. You right sure, now. you weren't just looking at the sun and you went, "That's bright." I can't rule it out. I do that fairly, yeah, yeah. fairly regularly. So. Bright on Netflix. That is fascinating, Mason. Mm-hmm. If that's true, yes, that can be part of your one bit of news. Because you bright think- samurai soul. What is it? Two warriors. I think it's animated. Two warriors must escort an elf girl to her homeland on a journey to fight off dark forces and to redeem themselves. 2021, an hour and 20 minutes. Is it connected to the Bright universe? It has to be. What's it called again, sorry? Bright Samurai Soul. And under collection, regular Bright is there. So, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And I may spin off. Yeah. There you go. Wow, wow, wow. Apparently it's got... Odd f- that you didn't know about it. Why would, why would I know about it? Because it's anime. It? <laughs> oh, yeah, no, nah, it's not really though, is it? Seems that way. Yeah, but it's also a spin-off of a bad movie, so that's probably why I also don't know about it. Probably true, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, it is anime, you're right. Wow. Anime director. There you go. Fantastic. 
I mean, who cares? The other thing is via Rolling Stone, <laughs> apparently the Deadshot movie has already been put on hold Whoa. due to the salary requirements. Uh, they don't know the exact number, so this is already not happening, uh-huh. but apparently for King Richard he made $20 million. Okay. So I'd imagine you'd have to give him something equivalent to turn up as that guy who's sort of good at shooting, like everybody else in that team. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Mm, so that that's character good. everyone's already forgotten. That's, that's terrific. Right. Yeah, so there great. you go. That is the end of the Will Smith saga, and obviously we'll have a big party when he comes back in 10 years. <laughs> if right. we're not all... Dead, Mason. Wow. Yes. If we're not all dead, we'll get jiggy with it. I think we should. Yeah. Wow. Feels like a millennium away, doesn't it? Yes. Wouldn't it be incredible? I think I saw someone tweet this, that if the first thing he does when he comes back and he gets his big standing ovation and applause and he's made amends and he's just spent 10 years just doing wonderful work and community outreach and he just fucking slaps someone. Like yeah, straight just, up. Just whoever happens to be on stage, <laughs> double slap. There's two presenters and he's just like wham, wham. Oh, not the, the one big slap no, like reckon, a follow through? Oh, maybe, yeah. Okay, yeah. maybe, yeah. Like he's just been training. For 10 yeah. years <laughs> to perfect the double slap. Yes, yeah. perfect. Yeah. And look, Oscar attendees and office uh, – sorry, Oscar attendees and, and Oscar winners and nominees have done way worse stuff. Oh, yeah. But it's just because they embarrassed them. He, he embarrassed them publicly. Exactly. Is, is and and they have to do something, yeah. you know, because mm-hmm. it was on television. Mm. Yeah. Mason, and you, you can't do that on television. No, you can't. So you should, they should have slimed him. Exactly. Um, this is via Uproxx. Are you familiar with method acting? I'm familiar with me- method acting. That's There we go. Because uh, the director of Morbius was speaking to Mike Ryan at Uproxx about uh, Jared Leto's behind the scenes. Mm. And this is what Mike Ryan asked. I heard a story about filming and I want to see if this is true. Someone told me that Jared Leto was so committed to playing Michael Morbius that even when he had to go to the bathroom, he would, he would use his crutches and slowly limp to get to the bathroom. But it was taking so long between pee breaks that a deal was made for him to get a, get him a wheelchair so someone could wheel him there quicker, and he agreed to that. Is that true? Oh, and here we the go. the director says, yes. Oh, boy. And then he says, all right. And then he says, yeah, because I think that's what ja- what's what Jared thinks, what Jared believes, is that somehow the pain of those moments, even when he's playing normal Michael Morbius, he needed. So he, he did it when he was... Normal Michael Morbius. Oh, like, no, I think he means non-powered Michael Morbius there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because he was having hit this pain his whole life, even though as he's alive and strong, it has to be a difference. Hey, man, it's people's process. That's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. What are you doing? It's well, did you see... Mads uh, Mikkelsen? Mads Mikkelsen. I have the quote here. It, please. This is what he said on method acting. What if it's a shit film? <laughs> what do you think you achieved? Am I impressed that you didn't drop character? You should have dropped it from the beginning. Nice. Wonderful. And Robert yeah. Pattinson's also talked about in the past, who's like, no one ever method actors acts being really nice. And, exactly, yeah. Know, and, and kind and helpful. Mm. I mean, what what is any of that? What are you doing? It's ridiculous. Just right? get up. Yeah. It's all, he did it for Blade Runner with being blind as well. It's just, yeah, I don't yeah. get it. Like, what, why? Mate, I mean, I, I would imagine it's just uh, he's got to build a mystique around him as an actor. I think maybe that's the key. Great. Because it's not for better performances in these movies that are torn to pieces in editing <laughs> anyway. <laughs> You're right. And they would get you to do five takes and just pick yeah. one that seems good at the time. Big drop-off second week, though, on Mr. Michael Morbius. Um, yeah, like a seventy five percent drop off. I would love to if you're a method actor in, on the level of a Jared Leto. Sure, and you flub a line, and the director calls cut. Yeah, where do you go there? Because I mean, you, you often watch blooper reels, and somebody screws up a line, and everybody has a laugh. Ah, ah bring it out. Okay, we'll try this again. Oh, look at this guy. What a, is he? Does he just like? Stare? Does, does he any, just like brood? Does anyone make a joke? Oh, maybe people are not allowed to make a joke. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe he just never flubs a line. He's maybe he's good. just that good. Yeah. Maybe that's how. That maybe that's his secret. Imagine getting someone to wheel you to the bathroom when you don't have to. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's just. Anyways, fast ten news. Fast ten, your your butthole. butthole. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so Vin Diesel. It could very easily become a line in the movie as that's well. Right. I'm just saying. You know, you're, you're right. I mean, not for free. No. Obviously, I've TM. Which one of the uh, the sidekick characters would say it? It couldn't be one of the serious ones. It'd be Tyrese. Yeah, it'd be Tyrese. That's yeah. right. I want to talk about him as well. Big Tyrese news this week, Mason. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't know if you saw. So Vin Diesel posted a photo with him and Brie Larson. Okay. And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see this angel <laughs> over my shoulder cracking me up? And you, <laughs> you say to yourself, that's Captain Marvel. Clearly there is love and laughter in this image. What you don't see, however, is the character you will be introduced to in Fast 10, your butthole. 
You have no idea how timeless and amazing she will be in our mythology. Beyond her beauty, her intellect, her Oscar, ha ha, is this profound soul who will add something you might not have expected but yearned for. Welcome to the family, Brie. Family all in caps, incredible stuff. There you go. So Brie Larson, Fast Tenure. What role do you think she'll play in Fast Tenure Butthole? Probably a good, good, good person. I reckon. Oh, you reckon? The, the, a, oh, would you reckon she'd play opposite a? Je- well, she's talking about <laughs> beauty and profound and soul. Mm, you, that's not a villain. That right? sounds like a love interest, right? Yeah, but he's already got a love interest mm. who already came back from the dead. Yeah, right. Yeah, maybe um, she's Paul Walker's other sister. Yeah, yeah, or Paul Walker's daughter from like another years past. previous. Yeah, relationship. another relationship. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, it doesn't sound like villain, does it? No, not at all. Um, They've already got Charlize Theron and Jason Momoa. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, But they are running low on villains, I think. Yeah. But I guess the, this isn't a movie. These aren't. This isn't a movie franchise about villains. This no. is a movie franchise about just building up the family. That's right. So and we added John Cena from the last one, didn't we? Yeah, we distributed, and he was Vin Diesel's brother. Vin Diesel has seventy nine million followers on Instagram. Does that make sense to you? Yes. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. Because you said it like it was a question. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. Didn't yeah. you have one bit of news for this week, Mason? Though? Do you I want did to do have that one now? bit. Of, I did have one bit of news. What do you got in terms of news? Well, in terms of news, uh, this week uh, Nicholas Cage did a, a Reddit AMA oh. and ask him anything. It's funny you should say that, Mason, because we did a Nicholas Cage face-off commentary over at BigSandwich.co right now. That's right. We did. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. Mm, had a great, a great deal of fun over there. We did. Good movie. Go yeah, agree. Classic of the genre. Classic of the genre. But uh, just some, just some delightful answers. Do you reckon he typed him himself? No, it looks like they're through the Lionsgate Reddit username. Oh, okay. And there's a little microphone, so I suspect he's dictating. Yes, he's dictating to somebody, and they're they're writing it out. Uh, somebody's uh, asked, "What is your dream role that you have yet to complete?" And he's replied, "I would like to play Jules Verne's Captain Nemo because of the character's love of the ocean. I share that with him." Oh, very so good. That's nice. That's a good answer. Uh, if only three of your films could be preserved for posterity, which three would you choose? He's Face chosen- off. No. Con Air, no, nope. and Broken Arrow. It's not his, but uh, oh yeah, great, a big <laughs> yeah, just three films. Uh, Bringing out the dead pig and leaving Las Vegas are his favourites. Bringing out the dead is that the one where he's the ambulance? Yeah, driver? the MT. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, think yeah. I've ever seen that. Yeah, yeah. I still haven't seen Pig either. Mm. God damn it! Well, somebody's asked. Um, they've decided to phrase their question as a statement. Okay, um, was it like, "Will you read my screenplay, Nicholas Cage?" Yes. <laughs> not enough people saw Pig. It's an amazing film, etc. Uh, here's a scene, uh, and he's written. Uh, thank you. I was interested in returning to a more quiet, naturalistic style of film performance, having done a series of more operatic performance styles. Yeah. The movie feels rather like a folk song to me or a poem, and the character of Rob was contending with tremendous grief and self-imposed isolation, and I think we as a group of people experienced a pandemic in 2020 to 2021 were probably also having similar feelings of loss and isolation, and it communicated to a nerve we were all experiencing. It's one of my favourite movies, and it's probably my best work. Wow, you've seen that, haven't you? Yes. And it's very good? It is good. Would you put it up there with uh, Con Air and Broken Arrow? No. Okay, good. Um, but, yeah, I think a lot of people are expecting kind of a, um, like a drive angry or some sort of weird revenge pick. Yeah, yeah. Where you just like. Well, that's always, that's how we start. That, that's the kind of actor he is, do you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. A, there's, He does a lot of kind of, I know he's known for his like big operatic performances mm. also, but he's, you know, he'll tone it down every yeah. now and then. He'll put on a more serious wig. Mm. You know, and just get about town. Yeah, and somebody's asked here, what's the movie quote you hate most when strangers holler at you in public? And he says, I don't hate any of the quotes. I'm glad they remember the movie. Wow. So that's nice. I I, I'm going to quote the weatherman to him when I see him. Hey, nice weather. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <sighs> Someone's written, dear Mr. Travolta, how has life changed for you since changing faces with Nicolas Cage? Do you regret the decision or would you do it again? And he said, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So, and we nice. talked about uh, the sequel to Face Off as well in our commentary because apparently there's going to be one. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Mm. Mason, did you know Tyrese Gibson was tricked on the internet this week very publicly? Oh, no. Yeah. I was at the Martin Scorsese. Yeah, yeah. so basically right. there was a quote going around from Martin Scorsese that said, mm. who was famously does not like comic book movies, right? He's come out and said it and he cops a lot of flack for it. But, you know... He's allowed to not like them. Mm. And that's fine. Yeah. He says, I was aghast to find out it was based on a comic book. This is about Morbius, of mm. course. This is the true this is the truest height of cinema, and even I cannot top it. A wise man admits when he is wrong and I was wrong. I apologize to all comic book movies. 
So uh, Tyrese Gibson screenshotted that. Mm-hmm. I don't feel bad about this. <laughs> and he wrote, wow, wow, wow. I can't believe that this just happened. Whoa. Cheers and hats off to you, Daniel Espinosa, who's, of course, the director. Uh-huh. This is so amazing, King. This is the king of kings of cinema, Martin Scorsese. This is huge. And he very promptly deleted that. So uh, oh, no. that, that but nothing goes away on the internet, Nothing does, it? does, unfortunately. But, yeah, you know, mate, he was in a rush and he probably saw it or whatever and he's just happy to get a bit of kudos, do you know what I mean? Because he yep. didn't get to use his... Robot arm in that movie. He's that robot arm. Very disappointing. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. we've seen some subsequent shots of the robot arm, and, and it looks very impressive. Does it? No, kind of just like a. Yeah, it looks like, like a little thing over his wrist. Yeah, it know. looks like a, like a, some sort of like arm guard you'd wear if maybe you sprained your arm. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. With some, with some pipes and stuff hanging with out of it. Some pipes and stuff yeah, hanging yeah. out of it. They should have gone full steampunk and like made it brass. Yeah, with gears on it. You I know? agree, mm-hmm. and never explain it. Yeah, uh, someone has asked. Nicholas Cades, what's your favourite pasta shape? I once went to an Italian restaurant in San Francisco about 25 years ago with Charlie Sheen because they had square tube pasta and he was very interested in trying square tube pasta. And we did and we loved it so much we went back the next day to try it again. (laughs) That's fun. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Charlie Sheen is awful. Uh, But other than that, that's fun. Yeah. Mm. There we go. Mason, thanks for bringing not one but two bits of news this week, You're which you had welcome. to do because you didn't bring a bit of news last week. Oh, that's right. That's to be your news that I do not have. Mm, it's true. Know? And now you've done it. So yeah. you're back up. You're, you're, you're on the you're back squared on track. off the ledger. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's terrific. You can even get ahead some weeks if you want. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> what if I? What if during the course of the episode, oh, you find I've, a bit of news, or I just vaguely remember reading a thing? No, in that way. Oh, well, it depends what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I can find the source, does we'll that do count a as a bit of poll. news? Okay. <laughs> Whether that counts as your bit of news. Mm. So we just saw the leaked uh, images of Gore, the God Butcher, who is Christian Bale's character from the next Thor movie. And, of course, we saw it in the traditional manner of our people, which is uh, some action figure reveals. That's some right. early release. Exactly. They've, they've, uh, they've fallen off the back of a truck. Yeah. People have gone, okay, there he is. And he just looks like a weird white monk. Yeah. I and mean, we got, obviously, there's multiple Thors in there. There is... Uh, yep. There's um, Ravager Thor yep. with the with the the leather vest, and there's New Look Thor. New Look He's got Thor. a sort of a new symbol across his chest. It's kind of blue and gold. I wonder if that's Nova Corps related. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then of course there's Mighty Thor, yep. which is Jane Foster Thor. Exactly. And there's obviously a Groot. Yep. And some other people. There's in there, a Star so Lord in there. Yeah. There's a Valkyrie in there. Uh, yeah, yeah, King King Valkyrie. Yeah. That's right. So yeah, there's a bunch of things going on there. There's been a criticism of like this is not really much going on here in terms of like prosthetics or makeup or CGI. Okay. Like there's a, it's, it just looks like Christian Bale with a shaved head mostly. Right, yeah, but yeah. He's got a big sword and that's good. Mm. But he's kind of got more of like sometimes like a squeedy kind of Voldemorty kind of face. Yeah, or like um, what's that Dragon Ball Z guy? He's white Freezer. and purple. White and purple? Freezer. Like Freezer? Okay. Yeah, yeah. What vegetable is he? What vegetable is he? Yeah, Freezer. Eggplant because he's purple. Why is his name Freezer then? Are they supposed to be vegetables? They're all supposed to be vegetables. Like broly is broccoli. Is we've definitely We've definitely had this Have conversation. We? Yeah, also I don't know anything What's about What's margin boo? Margarine <laughs> and poo. <laughs> He's pink. I don't know. That means you had to have done a bright red poo. You've eaten too many beets. <laughs> or you die. Yeah, or you die. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't think these... Are these, um... uh, Dragon Ball Z <laughs> villains. I'm pretty sure they are. I'm pretty sure they all are. They anyway, probably are. Um... In fact, I remember a conversation where we, we, we had this conversation and you agreed with that, which suggests you weren't listening during that conversation. Um, I don't think this this action figure reveal doesn't really reveal anything we didn't know beforehand. Like I think the new look Thor was on that yep. reveal poster, which everybody thought was fake, but then it turned out that's to be true, real. That's true, it turned out to be, yeah. Uh, we know that Jane Foster is going to become Thor, so that's not really a surprise. Oh, uh, okay, We, we yeah, knew yeah. the Guardians were going to be in there in some capacity. Yes, yes, so, yes. You know. Apparently only the Saiyans are named after vegetables. So I guess okay. like Vegeta, for oh. example, uh, Broly, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's a, there's a, there are so some are. That's what I thought. But I already That's knew. what I thought and what I said. And I already knew that. Okay. So that doesn't count as your one bit of news. Okay, but does Freezer an eggplant? Is he a Saiyan? He <laughs> doesn't say. He's not a Saiyan. Oh. He's a something else. Oh, terrific. Yeah. This is, did you like the segment of the show? What's RDJ up to? Yeah. What are you up to? Mm. You made that. Movie about animals and whatever that people know. Oh, I think I know what this is. Yeah, what is it? So it's my one bit of news. Is uh, Mason? He's uh, he's he's trying to uh, put together a Sherlock Holmes TV universe. Is that right? He is. That's right. So in addition to Sherlock Holmes three, which is on the way because he didn't slap anybody at the Oscars, Mm -hmm. a variety have said that two spin-off shows are in the works and they're going to be starring characters introduced 
in Sherlock Holmes 3. Now, there hasn't been a Sherlock Holmes movie since 2009. That's right. It's been a long time coming. I remember those movies a bit. I remember just Same. big Victorian wheels and cogs and yep. mm-hmm. punching people in your mind and whatever. Oh, a lot of, lot of slow motion mind punching, certainly, yeah. yeah. I, th- I think it's probably about time that this could come back. Yeah, because I, I, you know, I got over the TV show, and uh-huh. now sure, we're, yes. and now yeah. we're here. Mm. You know what I mean? So that's what Robert Downey Jr. is up to this week. That's terrific. And in addition to that, if we're talking Marvel, Mason, which we are, mm. Fandango are here, and they're telling us that they spoke to Sam Raimi, and they asked him about Spider-Man Four. Okay, and he said, "I've come to realize after making Doctor Strange that anything is possible. Really, anything in the Marvel universe, any team ups. I love Toby. I love Kirsten Dunst. I love all the things that are possible. I don't really have a plot story or a plan. I don't know if Marvel will be interested in that right now. I don't know what their thoughts are about are about that. I haven't really pursued that, but it sounds beautiful. Even if it wasn't a Spider-Man movie, I'd love to work with Toby again in a different role. Oh, so there you go. Uh, but he has to go through Sony to do that. Not that's true. Marvel. Marvel, an absolute nightmare. Which is a whole other smorbtuation. Smorbtuation. You've got to put in Morbius somehow. Absolutely. You <laughs> do, have to yeah. justify <laughs> paying Jared Leto $15 million probably. Oh, you think they wouldn't do it? They wouldn't do a Spider-Man 4 without Jared Leto? I don't know, man. I think... Uh, he's made some waves, hasn't he's he? He's made some he's waves. He's really made his imprint on We're the, talking on about Spum. him. We're talking about yeah, him, you know? Sony Pictures Universe of Marvel movies, Spum. Exactly. Uh, here's another question uh, Nicholas Cage answered. Who is a director you'd like to work with? I would love to work with Christopher Nolan. Oh, Nolan. I'd love to work with Ari Aster. I don't know who that is. I'll look that up. How do you I would spell love that? to work Ari Aster, A R I A S T E R. I would love to work with Robert Eggers, Spike Lee too. Okay. So Robert Eggers did uh, The Lighthouse and so on and so forth. Oh, very good. Oh, Ari Aster did uh, he did Hereditary Midsummer and Midsummer oh, okay, as well. Okay, right. So, okay. Yeah. Well, that's kind of Cage's wheelhouse now. Like yeah, he's absolutely. Doing some, some creepy horror stuff. So I wonder if Nolan would put him in because he's just so distinct. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he likes to not always, but he likes to hire like pretty low key. You know yeah. what I mean? Has is has Nolan? Um, is Nolan set in his ways as far as casting goes now? No, he hired Josh Peck apparently for Oppenheimer. Oh yeah, and uh, Josh Hartnett. Josh Hartnett as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very He's good. He's up to the Jays. He's <laughs> well, it's Josh Hartnett was supposed to be Batman. Mm. Apparently, he wanted it was his first choice. Okay, choice. And Josh Hartnett yes. turned it down. Oh. And Josh Hartnett regrets that because he was like, well, he wasn't just asking me like to be Batman. Uh-huh. He wanted to work with me on like a number of things. I and see. I wish I had have done that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think he would have been a terrific Batman, yeah. Josh Hartnett. But um, so there. I'm glad they're friends again, Mason. Uh, speaking of Star Wars. Were we? Yes. Okay, terrific. Before the show we were. Because okay. we're, of course, we're doing the prequel movies for Caravan of Garbage That's this right. week. Now, I just want to give everybody the heads up here. They're super long. Mm. The first one is 36 minutes. The second one's going to be even longer. My goodness. So, but because they're so long, we're spacing them out over two weeks. So what's going up this week instead is a video game Star Wars one instead. Mm -hmm. Just so people, it wasn't meant to be a trick. It's going to look (laughs) like we tricked you. Yes. But the only reason it's this way is because it's A little more time to edit. And I was talking to Ben about this. Um... And he, he, you know, he was he wanted to, you know, be involved in all of them, and also get a bit get a bit early because he's going away for a week, and Lawrence is also helping, obviously. But I thought, oh well, then if they're double the length, then I need something in between. And then you know, that's so. I guess what I could do is do something in between, or record video game footage. That's right. But for some reason in my mind, I'm like that will be easier. But that's like it's not easier, mate. <laughs> right, yes. It turns out that it's harder. Mm, yeah. But anyway, that's happening. So it's going to be this week, Phantom Menace video game then the real movie next week, then Clone Wars video game, then the real movie. So the next six weeks is going to be all Star Wars all the time. Nice. That is not – that. what I'm doing now is not a trick. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> you've done You've done more for smaller reveals. Exactly. You've done more elaborate setup for <laughs> – For less of an impact. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. So uh, last bit of news though. So Ezra Miller – Mm-hmm. Been, we talked about this last week, a bit of hot water, Mason. A bit of hot water. We talked about last week how they broke into somebody's apartment, mm-hmm. threatening, stealing, yep. calling names, murder, all of these kinds of things. And now they've been banned from the Oscars for 10 years. That's not the case. But so that's what's been going on there. Obviously they need help, clearly having some kind of mental health crisis yes. and all of those things. But 
Warner Brothers and DC obviously had to do something at some point about this because it's not the first incident. And apparently they had an emergency meeting concerning Ezra Miller and the consensus was hitting pause on any of their future projects, including appearances in future DC properties. So the Flash is already done. Mm-hmm. So pe- people, there was a big push this week to get Grant Gustin to replace. A big push by who? But the Fans. internet. Oh, yes. but like, and it, it can be done. Like we've seen it happen. It happened get in... Get Tignataro. Yeah, but I just... I don't know. I, I don't think. I think what they will probably do is still put it out and put Ezra like away from any of the marketing, like they're doing from Fantastic. Yeah, Beasts. I think. Look, honestly, what I think they would do, mm. Warner Brothers, is release the Flash, the movie, the Flash, and see if it does well. And if it does well, they'll just ride that out for a while and see how much <laughs> they can sweep under the rug, yeah. and then like reevaluate after that. Yeah. Because obviously, they put in so much. Yeah. time and money and effort into this thing and it keeps getting delayed mm-hmm. and this feels like maybe, okay, we'll, we'll push this out and then yeah. we'll unpause uh, Ezra Miller's career if this mm. does really well and makes a lot of money. I think like you said though, they're probably like we'll, they'll, they'll probably pivot this whole thing into Batman-centric yeah. mm-hmm. and Supergirl's in it as well and yeah. if there are going to be spin-offs or sequels, it'll probably be related to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, because that's I'd imagine the things that people will, well, that's why I want to go as well. Like, I want to see Michael Keaton again. Yes. Like, outside of that, I'm like, mm. I'm not super interested in it. But yeah. there's yeah. so much. There's only so much joy you can derive out of Michael Keaton being like, "Hey, that must have been something to do with Spider Man." <laughs> I, I got a lot of joy out of that. Uh, and also, the Flash shoot, which shot three to four years ago, uh-huh. uh, it was fraught with drama, not with yelling and violent out- outbursts, Ooh. but apparently Ezra had frequent mel- meltdowns and uh, would get a thought in their head and say, I don't know what I'm doing. Now, that that could just be like I'm carrying a major franchise by Millions myself. Millions of dollars are on the line. And I'm playing multiple versions of myself yeah. uh-huh. and, you know, and Michael Keaton's here and maybe that's – maybe mm. Michael Keaton was putting – them off their game, you know. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's Michael Keaton's fault. Yeah. That's what you said to me before yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the show. I did say that. It's true. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I think sets are always fraught with drama. I don't necessarily. I mean, if they're not hitting people on the set. You know what I mean? True. If they're being just wheeled around in a wheelchair, being annoying, <laughs> then that's fine. Apparently, yeah. isn't it? But apparently, though, IG they spoke to IG and the people at Warner Brothers and DC and said no such meeting took place, Uh and the report of this was an exaggeration. So it's good to know that the official word from Warner Brothers and DC is just, "Nah, we're not doing anything. (laughs) You're exaggerating." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, But it's also interesting that somebody has decided to make up a. uh... I don't think it's made up. I think something happened. Oh, you think? I don't know what it is. Okay, but there's no way they couldn't have this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Like when the Chris Rock and Will Smith thing happened, mm. I saw an apology from Chris Rock, allegedly. But then it turned out just a Chris Rock fan had like manu- had like written their apology and attempted to pass it off as as Chris Rock's apology. Why? I don't know. Yeah. People on the internet. People on the internet. People on the internet. Yeah. Wow, we're back. It's Harry Potter time yet again. Wow. Uh, our, which has now become our least favourite time of the year. <laughs> or every three years? When do these happen? What I don't was the know. last one? 2018, I want to say? All I know is we've got we're, we, we've got the Fantastic Beast movies. We're, we're, we're still, we still have two Harry Potter movies to watch to round out the yes. Septrilogy. Yep. And look. J.K. Rowling sucks. <laughs> yeah, yes. That's, uh, that's, I, I'm just baffled by her commitment to this, like. Commitment to the bit. To the bit of, like. Being a trans I, I just don't. I don't understand. I, I just. I don't get it. Like yeah, it's just kind of baffling, and it also kind of ruins so much of this universe and the good people because there are yeah. good people associated mm-hmm. with these. And like we did talk about, like, do we even want to watch these movies yeah, anymore? I mean, do we, we did, want to we, talk about? We did them? receive yeah. a little bit of correspondence from yeah. people, mostly by Twitter, being like, you know, you could just ignore it, and we could. Yeah, and, uh, and I'm here to say, uh, I'm not here to say kind things. Also. Not about the, uh, about about this. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I would say uh, I'm, I'm going to justify this in our mind by saying us two, two yep. people, we watched it, uh, and we are probably I don't know about I don't know what's in your heart, James. Yeah, I'm probably going to say you don't have to see this Absolutely one. Absolutely not. Yeah. If you're out there, you're on the fan. And I think that is a that is our public service to people. We've taken the hit here, just <laughs> yeah. to say if you were expecting a big jump in terms of quality, yeah. Or, I mean, I think it's better than the last one, mm-hmm. but I that yeah. <laughs> you know, but that's not. Yeah, if we can convince much. tens of thousands of people to perhaps not see this movie, then I think 
our purchase is justified and yeah. we can write it off on our tax return. Exactly. So, Which is perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, speaking of cost, I guess. Yeah. I well, mean, first there, of all, the bloody time it took me to yeah. bloody watch this movie. Look, there's a, I, think, I think there's a big discussion to be had on why that particular island produces so many weird yeah. transphobes. Yeah. And it but seems to be like baked into a lot. And it's the same here, to be fair. Like, yeah. there's a lot of that here and it's baked into like the culture and the law, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I, I don't think we're, I don't think, I mean, maybe one day we'll talk about it, but I don't think we're necessarily qualified to talk about it beyond the idea that I think once people reach a certain level of like wealth and yeah. uh, power and, and you influence, know, influence yeah. I think they stop interrogating their own thoughts. Yeah. Because they're like, well, I got here. Because, well, how, because I'm great. I'm, okay, every time I had a chance to make a choice, I made the correct choice because yeah. the other alternative is you go insane. Yeah. Like imagine if you lived in a council house and like you didn't know where your your, your money was going to come from and then like a couple of decades later you literally live in a castle, a medieval castle because yeah. you have so much money. If you were to be like, oh, if I went to uh, if, if I went to a meeting with a book publisher and they didn't like what I did mm. – or if I like gave away the film rights for a couple of grand or something, I'd still be there right now. Mm. You'd go insane. So the easiest choice is to just be like, I'm not a qualified psychiatrist, by the way. Yeah, are you yeah. not? I'm not. I'm not actually. You, but, I'm just going to shut this down then if you don't Okay, no, 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 no. We need content. We need to film. We need to pad this episode. But like I think you just go, well, that if I thought about that, I'd go completely insane. Yeah. So it's better to think like, no, no, I'm always right all the time. And also you're surrounded by people who are always just like, oh, yeah, that's actually great. Yeah. yeah. You should write that article. You're actually doing a service. You're actually yeah. saying things that people do- yeah. are afraid to say. And as to why they have that particular thought, I don't know. I don't get it. And yeah. I don't understand like the idea that like having trans people and accepting them and, you know, making it part of the community and making it the norm, mm-hmm. like ha- that doesn't undercut any other movement. I don't think it undercuts anything about, you know, Feminism or anything else, do you know what I mean? All of these things can exist because the real villain is capitalism. Oh, oh, wait. It's Grindelwald. <laughs> Grindelwald, okay. Yeah, Grindelwald. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to get some capitalism nerds coming after me, Matt. I tell you <laughs> what, mate. I'll t- I'll but tell you're you not, I'm not going to get any Grindelwald <laughs> fans after me because they know. They know he's the bad guy. That's why they love him. Yeah. But I think it's just like it's it's keeping the status quo. It's powers that be keeping mm-hmm. things the way that they want yeah. them, the way that they are. Anyways, this movie cost 175 to 200 million dollars, Mason. Wow! It doesn't open in the US, but it is open in the UK, Australia, Germany, Spain, uh, Japan, and China. They reckon it's going to make about 50 million for the weekend. That was big, bigger than Mor- Morbius, sure, and that's also lower than Morbius. the last one. Did you feel? Oh, any- just before, I just wanted to get these out: uh, Borbius, yep, and Snorbius. That's good. I didn't. I, I they were in the back of my mind. I caught them in Pokemon Go, Mason. Oh, you caught yourself a Snorbius? I did. Thank uh. you. Yeah, did you feel any of, before I ask you what the, you think the story was? You're going to set me up that little trap where you yeah, trap yeah. me and ask me what did the story is. Did you feel any kind of hype or anticipation? I know, like, we were not interested in this. Yes, correct. But did you get a sense of, like, a big marketing push? No. I didn't, I haven't seen much of this. I remember when the first Fantastic Beast came out, a movie that, like, I remember quite liking at the time. Uh-huh. I didn't go back and rewatch these, which I maybe needed to because I was <laughs> I was a bit confused for some yeah. of this. But I think that's I think that's baked into the plot of this, which we'll Absolutely. Yeah. But did I just didn't feel like there's any sense of like wonder and awe and anticipation for this no, anymore. I didn't, no, 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 no. I, I think, think that there ship was, has sailed. There was more for that HBO Max special about the original oh, yeah, right. uh-huh. uh movies. What do you think the story was though? Oh, uh, okay. So when we last left our heroes, James, uh they were they were trying their best uh to stop the villain from stopping World War II and the Holocaust. I remember that. If you remember, so, it so, had to happen. So by the, the transitive properties of that, they were trying to make sure yeah. that the World War II and the Holocaust were going to happen. Yeah. Um, and also some people had, like, uh, Jacob and Queenie had, had split apart due to, like, very, uh, very... Um, <laughs> she goes with Grindelwald. Yeah, but there was, like, a very... <laughs> there was very, a reason? There was a very clear ideological, like, split there and it was very important to Queenie that she... got Like, it was a real, just a real... You know, it was a, it was a, she, it was a choice she had to make. Even you know, this, this, this decision was more important than love to her. Yeah, and um, uh, God, you, you got a good memory. <laughs> God, the weird, the, the zoologist guy, he was in love probably. Yep, and his brother was there. Yep, and Dumbledore was there. Dumbledore was there. Yeah. Anyway, in this movie, they've basically soft rebooted it. Yeah, because clearly they went. Yeah, it actually is weird that Grindelwald does want to make sure World War Two doesn't and, happen. And do you know what it is? I think yes. 
So the last movie was written exclusively by J.K. Rowling, okay. right? She's obviously had a hand in all of these, mm-hmm. but that one in particular was just hers. And it became very complicated and mm-hmm. law-heavy. And I remember close to the last scene was somebody coming in and telling their origin story, and then the next person went in and said, well, I also have an origin story, and, which and is he, what happens in the book. Yeah, that's, they that's, that's what They come into the rooms yeah. and they explain things to each other, right? Which yeah. works in a book, right? Mm-hmm. And... So Sean's got this video, I don't know if you've seen it, about the Harry Potter franchise. So Sean books. the YouTuber, yes. the, 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 the bread yeah, not YouTuber. Our friend not Sean. our friend Sean. <laughs> yes, we do not know him. Where he basically talks about how each book is kind of, it's a book behind in terms of reactions to any criticisms or plot holes. Okay, For example, right. the slavery element of the elves, like they mention it in book two, I don't think it's mentioned in three, and then they come back around to it in book four. And then in book four they're like, well, actually they like being slaves. Yeah, so yeah. because there's that delay, the book comes out and people go, hey, what, what about this? And then they go, oh, they, I mean, J.K. Rowling goes in the next book, then explains the thing that happens. Yeah. So there's mm. a one book delay, and I think that's kind of what happens yeah, and you know it's like the sign of a great franchise when the first 30 minutes is just explaining shit that's already happened. Yeah. Which, look, I appreciate it because I didn't know what the fuck was happening. Like, I'd forgotten so much of this. But I think it's partially your memories haven't held up, but also partially because they have tweaked it. Like, in this one, Grindelwald, he's just vaguely bad. Yeah. Like, he just wants to kill everybody. Um, he was a baby in the last one, I remember. Yeah, and and in this he's just in 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 this one he had in the last one he had a motive which didn't jive with you know reality. Sure, but in this in this one he's just like, oh, Grindelwald wants to get power, so then he can kill all the humans, and then all the wizards are also going to die. So you've got to, and he's going to be the president. He's going to be the president also, and I think they. There's went, a president of all wizards. Is that a thing? Don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but also in this one, there's this vague vibe that Queenie, who in the Last one went, I believe in this cause and I'm going to leave. Yeah. In this one, she's just like, it's just like she's a hostage. Yeah. And there's no, there's never any moment where she goes, oh, I left you because I felt this way or I believe this and now I've changed my mind. Yeah. And now I'm stuck here and I need to find a way to escape. It's just like, oh, I think I made a bad decision and I shouldn't be here, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. I don't know. I, be, I mean, I appreciated them explaining, like cap- catching me up on what the, they thought the story was this t- this mm. time around. Mm. And I guess there's also, because we have revisit more of Hogwarts, and look, I genuinely think that uh, Jude Law is a fantastic choice for Dumbledore. Mm. I like his little outfits. I like just everything that he's doing. <laughs> yeah. You know? He still hasn't, like... There's no, there's no, there's no evidence yet that he's switching over to comfortable wizard robes yet. He's still wearing the suits. No, no. What is going on? Although there? he's wearing like a knitted vest from time to yeah. time. Maybe that's he's, maybe that's the gateway drug to big robes. He's hands down the best Dumbledore, like in yeah, right. all of these movies. Mm. Uh, what was yeah. I was, yeah, what was I also going to say? Um, well, we could talk about how they actually address that he's gay. Like they say it. Do they? That he's in, or not the word, but they yeah. say. That I was in the love. The essential word. They yeah, don't say I the was, essential word. We were in love and we made this unbreakable bond because we love each other and we had a relationship, etc. I don't know if they do say that, I mean, they, they say it more than they ever done before. I know, but I think they'd <laughs> say, oh, there was a love. There was so much oh, love. Oh, you might be right. And it's yeah. like... If you want, like, I, I feel like they, they're not committing because you could very easily go, oh, the love of two great friends and they grew up together and they had great adventures. Isn't there a love there? There's certainly a love there. You wanted them to do a big kiss. I wanted them to do a big kiss and they never did. In this franchise, you don't like I don't like, like or care about. Yeah, I, I think that. That's... There's a moment at the start and I guess we'll do more. Burn this whole thing down, I say. <laughs> well, I want to talk about the future of this. But there's a moment at the start, I think it's at the very start where Dumbledore meets up with Grindelwald, and we'll talk about the recast, I guess. Uh, and they have a discussion about how they're old friends and maybe they're in love or whatever, and they've got an unbreakable bond together. Which did he have that unbreakable thing in the last one? Yes, he did. I think yes. did. Okay, great. Yeah. And then they all return to their worlds or whatever. It didn't really happen, or it's a memory, or they're meeting in their minds. Mm. What was that? Yeah. What is it? I don't know, James, because they go to this particular cafe, I guess, in London, or maybe it's magical London, but I don't think. I think it's just regular. It's regular London because they refer to the muggles and they're like, look, they get a load of these muggles these or whatever. Twerps. And they're like, mm, there's delightful. This is the the, t- the good tea is here or whatever. So it's clearly a real place. Okay. But then they have the meeting and then Grindelwald leaves and then the entire place is engulfed in flames. Yeah. And it's it's entirely vague as to what is. Was that illusory flames? Yeah. Were they? Did he, did they go to a cafe and burn it down together? Right. Exactly. Yeah. So what? What I think this this is it supposed to not matter? Yeah, it is supposed to not matter. Well, good. So what What I dis, What I think I took away from this movie is that this, in terms of course correction, this one was designed to 
soft reboot to get rid of any of the plot uh, holes in, yeah. in the last one. And also, this is a, this was a movie designed to tie up all the loose ends, and and just in case this is the last one, and they don't do four and five, they're just like, yeah, okay, tie all this off, give some people a sort of happy ending for the various things. Let's let's get it let's get it back to a status quo. Yes. Whereas if if we don't do two more, nobody will mind yeah, really. You, or we could launch into an even bigger thing. Yeah. But you know what this did? This what this movie made me feel was sad that they they didn't turn this franchise into what it probably should have been which is just a, a bin fire well a bin fire <laughs> but just like a just a just a weird goof who loves magical yes. creatures just getting into little adventures and going around the world and going I oh, agree. i'm going to i'm going to meet the, these creatures and oh no there's poachers and i've got to yep. defeat the poachers for these brave little animals and they small can't scale. save them. small scale like there was elements of this where i go oh it's a little bit indiana jones yeah. there and he's you know they're going down I into like all these little creatures yeah i like how he fights a big scorpion in a big yeah. scorpion jail. Yeah, you know, he, he, exactly. He's going down to weird catacombs and all this sort of stuff and, and he has to use his knowledge of scorpion spider creatures to, yeah. to, to get, you know, sneak his way through and all. He's got all this knowledge and stuff and I thought that was a lot of fun. Yep. And that's what these sh- movies should have been but clearly they went, okay, well, we need an, we actually need a world-shattering yeah. saga to, to bring think, people along. I like, think, ideally, what they should have done mm-hmm. is... Like do that, yes, and then you've got all these established characters, and you do three like fun little fantastic whatever adventures, mm-hmm. and then you're like, and now we're doing the Holocaust of World War Two movies, yeah, mm-hmm. or don't do those at all. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> it might be even the yeah. more, the wiser decision yeah. would be. Yeah, but I kind of feel like they went okay. Well, because you could carry a bunch of people over into that, and yeah, then you're true. building a wizarding war based on. Some of the characters yeah. you know. Yeah, exactly. Like you meet Dumbledore and you meet whatever. Yeah, but I think with this movie they went, okay, well, we've got Newt and his brother and they don't really get along and we've got Dumbledore and Grindelwald and they have this pact and it's going to end in, you know, the, the, their destruction. We have to get rid of that because obviously they don't have it in the future. Yeah. And um, uh, Jacob and Queenie, but we like Jacob and Queenie and they got split up in the last one, so we've got to get them back together yeah. and, uh, and et cetera. Let's tie all that off yep. and, uh, and then, then we'll end it. Also, we should put in a magical horse which chooses the president. Oh, there should be a magical Is horse. Is that in spoilers? <laughs> and no, I don't other, think it matters. There's a few other things, I, I, I guess, before we do full-on spoilers. Isn't it lucky that he was investigating? Isn't it lucky that Newt was investigating the magical horse <laughs> that can determine who the president is. And then it just came up in the plot, you know? What yeah. are the odds of all the magical creatures, the, the presumably assume, thousands of species of magical creatures? He was keeping an eye on it because he, he knew, like they all knew oh, that. Oh, because it could choose the president. I guess. Uh, oh, oh. But du- so Dumbledore has a plan because he can't move against Grindelwald because of the magical because charm. of the magical charm, which does a vague thing. If which he, does a, if, if he, he even thinks, thinks about, about moving against yeah. Grindelwald, the charm which is around his arm Will choke really, him or really, really squeezes gives him, him a big tug. Yeah, yeah. But it's strange because so he sets up a, a random plan in motion to confuse Grindelwald, who's, who's he can see the future. He can see the future because the magical president choosing horse. Yeah. One of them. There's two of them. Mm-hmm. And also, but so that's fine to move vaguely. That uh, works apparently, and, and so you can trick the charm into into doing certain things. And I get look, okay, so uh, this is an absolute fucking minefield of a franchise at this point. They've obviously recast as Mads Mikkelsen. He did pretty good, I guess. Sure, you know what yeah. I mean? Didn't enjoy, you know, <laughs> didn't commit to any method acting. Pretty so low key, his credits. And, yeah. and he had because, the... like he said, what if it's a bad film and you method acted? <laughs> mm. Oh yeah. Also, um, like I like. The actor who plays Jacob, I think he's good. And I Queenie, agree. I think they're a good combo. But it's fascinating they went, and I guess this is a spoiler, but it's like the first ten minutes. Uh, he's just he's sad, and he and he works in his bakery, and the bakery has had better days because he's so sad because Queenie left him yeah. for very important ideological reasons that don't matter anymore. Yeah, and so, but what happens is he sees a woman outside his bakery being harassed by some toughs, yeah. and he goes out and he's like, "Hey, you leave, leave that lady alone, what have you?" And then it turns out that she is a witch. And the Tufts are her friends, and they're pretending. Yeah. And then she says, "Well, what we need in this battle between omnipotent wizards <laughs> is just a regular guy who's willing to stand up for for what's right." Who was I, in the other movies? I don't think you need him at all. I don't. <laughs> surely there are men and women out there who want to stand up for what's right, who also have vast magical powers, and that yes. might be actually more useful. Absolutely. As opposed to just a guy who can run around and be like, "Newt, look out." <laughs> Look out! <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess maybe you could get him to distract Queenie because they have a mind-reading woman, yeah, I guess. Right. Uh-huh. That, was, that was the idea. But 
But yeah, it's very strange. I also found this movie so strange in comparison to like the original Harry Potters is because oftentimes the villain and the good guys, they're all just in the same conference room, just sure. sitting at like across from each other at different tables. And it just seems like the stakes are too high and he's murdered too many children for mm. this any of this to be okay at this point. Yeah, right. You know, where they're just like, yeah, people want him to be the president, so he's the president. And I guess like... The, the the parallel could be we've had multiple world leaders who are known yeah. killers look, this, or, this, or sexual deviants this, this who is, become... Look, I think we're well into spoiler territory at this point. Spoilers! I, I don't think it matters anymore. Okay. But, so the plot, the crux of the plot is that there needs to be a new magical president in order to determine the direction that the wizarding world goes. Are they going oh to help humanity? Are they going to destroy humanity? Et cetera. They but, need the ch- and they need the chillin. Yeah. So so ordinarily that's a vote. There's a there's a just a vote between yeah. I guess important magical politicians. I think everybody can vote though, oh, okay, right? They put their wands in the air or that's something. That's true. They, they, there's, a lot, there's a lot of firing fireworks out of your wand in celebration or rage or whatever. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But anyway, but it turns out that the traditional way of determining who the president is in olden times yeah. is there is a creature called a chillin, which yep. looks like a little deer, yep. and it is pure of heart, and it can see if somebody is pure of heart. Even and, if they killed their sister. Yeah, and it, and it, and it just sort of... And it will... It, it just You get one, and it just sort of wanders around, and then it finds the person with the most pure of heart, and it kneels to them, and you go, hooray, it's the president. We already had a kneeling magical creature. Was it one of the Harry Potter movies? The, was it? The, the hypocrite or Maybe something. It, oh, wait, I did say that one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't think that one shows the mm, president, though. I think this no. is the horse that chooses the so president. So what happened was, at the start of the movie, Newt is, because you need a newborn one. Yeah. So Newt was supervising the birth of a new chillin. Yeah. And then the bad guys come in. It was just chillin there, wasn't and they it? Za- yes, very good. And they zap <laughs> they zap Newt and they take the chillin away and their plan is to kill the ch- – Mads Mikkelsen's plan is to kill the chillin. Is their plan not to kill Newt, to just leave him there? They just leave Newt there so he can't use his magical expertise later. Yeah. yeah they just want to stun him for a bit. Um, and Mads Mikkelsen's plan is to kill the chillin that he has, that he has acquired yep. and then – Use his blood for you. Then use his wizarding powers to bring it back as like an undead one that has been. And use his blood to see the future. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which he can also do anyway. I think the blood is it. Can he? I don't know. Oh, when he's got the big, the the wars coming powers, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. So I don't think Maybe, he needs it. Yeah, you're right. But anyway, so then, so his plan is to be exonerated for all the crimes he's already done. Yeah. And they're like, that's fine. There wasn't enough evidence. I mean, yeah. we saw him do a lot of murders and escape from that jail. And He's too vague. Also, you know how Voldemort, his symbol was like a skull with a snake coming out of it? Yeah, yeah. This guy's just like three letters in a green symbol, and I'm like, I don't know yeah. what's that. What's like that? a monster energy drink. Yeah, it, that's what it looks like, and it's yeah. not distinct. Do you yeah, know what I mean? That is true. Snake with a skull with yeah. a snake coming out of it, very clear. Anyway, they're like, well, okay, we're ex- we're going to exonerate him from because there was no evidence despite all the eyewitnesses and all the evidence yep. and all the newspaper articles. He killed said, all those people in that room. Yeah, he yeah. killed the woman who... Wait, what was the woman who turned into a snake? Negri or something? Yeah. Yeah. In the last one. Remember? She's not in this one. No. Did she true. turn into a snake? Yeah, because isn't she in the Harry Potter movies proper, like the main franchise? I mean, it's the snake, in... yeah, yeah. but not the woman. Yes. But there was no snake woman in this one. No, that's true. There was no snake woman. Wow. But my, I guess where I'm going with this is, so his plan, the, he gets exonerated for all his crimes, and then... They, they go to the he's there's there's normally two candidates to be the president and he shows up and he's like I'll be the third candidate and this creature that I've brought in will kneel to me and show that I'm the the purest of heart first yeah. of all why would anyone believe that it, anything it's a can, magical universe anything exactly anything can be anything yeah you could turn a chair into the magical horse that chooses the president you could turn a pedophile into a rat <laughs> and then be like well that rat is actually he shows who's pure of heart and he'll bow to me and I'll become the president or whatever. Because that's what happened in the rat. Yeah. When the, the guy turned into the rat. Yeah. yeah exactly. So it's, why would you? Why would you believe it? Yeah. And it's not like it's a, they're not the, the, uh, the, the main, like the, the guy, the chancellor or whoever, who's like, I'm going to figure out, you know, who, how, the, how the president is. No, no, run a, run a he test. didn't bring his own one in. No, he just the, was like, exactly. oh, well, yeah, we'll use yours then, shall we? <laughs> well, You're obvi- he's obviously a bad guy. They don't I run don't, the test. They don't yeah. have a, a, a scanning Spell? Anything, right? Exactly. Oh, this thing's obviously dead. Also, it's grey. It's obviously died and come back. But then it turns out that... There's two chillers. Yeah, the, 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 the old chillin' actually, before it died, it actually gave birth to a second chillin', so Newt Scamander has that. Yeah. And then the big finale is... You've got to get the real chillin' yeah, yeah. to pick the president. Yeah. 
And then the real chillin's like, well, actually, Dumbledore, you're the best one. Which is ridiculous because the whole point of Dumbledore, and even Dumbledore himself knows this, is that he sucks, hmm. right? Initially, before all of this, and he talks about it in this movie, he's like, I want to do the same thing as Grindelwald. I wanted to kill all the humans and be the president of all the humans or whatever. Mm-hmm. And in the later movies, he takes Harry Potter and he basically raises him to be slaughtered by Voldemort. Mm-hmm. Why would it pick him? Because he's, he's, he's one of the main guys. Exactly, but he, his name's in the title. If James. anything, it would be out to like mute. If anything, yeah, right. You know, doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, pretty cool though, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess he was aware, self-aware enough to just be like, no, yeah, <laughs> no, no, not me. I'm actually a bad guy, and you are a very unwise creature. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Uh, Ezra Miller's in this, as we've mentioned. Yeah, uh, but again, I think they were like. We got to sand the edges off this character before he was just this murderous whirlwind of, of death, <laughs> death and debris. And it's like you're 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 part of the Dumbledores, and they abandon you. And, and you're Dumbledore's brother, Ezra Miller. And it's just you want revenge, but in this one, Dumbledore's just like, oh yeah, we actually didn't know. Yeah, so that's fine. And 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 Ezra Miller's character's like, well, I guess that's fine. Yeah, and also uh, I can't wait for that character to die off screen in between movies if they ever get one. Yeah, oh, because he's his power has overwhelmed him. Or yes, something. power, and then because he goes with his dad, <laughs> and but then you don't need to see him again because the bird that knows that you're dying is following him around. Ah, the phoenix. Which, by the way, I would hate that. Same. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah, the... I'd be like, can you give me like a ballpark? Yeah, like a week or a month, six months. Yeah, come on, man. Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah, just yeah. want to quickly get back to the Scorpion Jail. Okay, it's a fun sequence. Yes. So Newt's brother, who's a big nerd, a yes. even bigger button-down nerd. Oh, just before I forget it, I'm, I was going to oh, mention sorry, it before. Um, this is this is unrelated, but remember when I think in the first one, probably an Opagon. Where no, you'll remember this. Do you remember the first one where uh, Newt and his girlfriend, on-off girlfriend character? Yeah. They they. Don't follow the rules in the in 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 a va- the vaguest possible way, and they're like, "We're gonna sentence you to death. We're gonna I, dissolve you in this room. We're gonna put you in the acid room." But anyway, we're gonna also gonna jail Grindelwald, the worst mass murderer, yeah. wizard killer of them all. Yes. What is this? What is this? Ru- well, what it, is this universe? It's strange because, and that t- speaks to the jail thing. Yeah. So when they're all in the same room hanging out, yeah. and Newt's brother gets captured and put in a prison. Yeah. Because he needs to, we need the prison sequence. Yeah, because they would, because they're the German wizards, the German wizard cops, the wizards. Yes, thank you. They are they're corrupt, I think, yeah, or they're yeah, yeah. working for Grindelwald, and they yes. zap him. So they put him in the jail. Yeah, but Newt turns up and he goes, "I'm here to see my brother," and he gives him a little light bee in a jar. Yeah, and leaves. He has to leave all his magical stuff. Yeah, and I thought he was going to visit him and then bust him out. Yeah, but. With that jail, could he just you just walk in and grab someone? Is that like was he being released? Oh, do you know what I mean? Because that oh, wasn't a jail break, was it, or was it not? You mean what was what was Newt's what? Plan? What did the guy running the jail think was happening there? Oh, was he like you've come to visit your brother? I think it was a visit thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, as I was not. But it was very vague. So, yeah. but it, it's it's sort of this open air jail where you just sort of hung upside down. Yep. And it's filled with if, scorpions. But if your light goes out, the big scorpion. Kills. There's, a, there's also a giant scorpion that can. It's a scorpion spider creature that can like shoot fireballs, and it's an got a big and an acid, and it's got a big stinger. Yeah. And it just. It just eats the it just eats the inmates. Yeah. Like are they is are they have they been put in the, is is it an actual jail or is it a place to put like food a torture for the room? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, so so Newt goes in there and he distracts the he distracts the big creature and because of his knowledge of magical zoology, he knows that if you if you pretend to be a scorpion, they will they will like They love that. They love that and they will not eat you. So they have, there's a funny sequence where they both have to pretend to be scorpions yeah. and they escape, and that's fun. And they're in little coats. Newt looks like a little Doctor Who fellow, doesn't he? Does, he doesn't he? He's always looked like a little Doctor Who fellow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think that's probably because, well, Doctor Who would have been huge when... Yeah, probably I mean, like not, 2015 not, or Not whatever. Harry Potter movie huge, but sure. if, if you're trying to build a new you're franchise... you Matt Smith kind yeah, of if you're ba- Yeah, if you're basing you... If you need a, a new character, because Newt was not... Fantastic Beasts is not a novel, right? It's a no. I mean, it's, it's like a, a guide. It's a reference. It's a reference book. book. So they were yeah. like building a new character, and they, I think they probably went, "Yeah, Doctor Who's cool. Yeah. He's got a little bow tie, and that's fun, and is you know, yeah, mm. he's got a little case. Yeah. Uh, don't open that case, by the way. No, it's, yeah. Oh, also in this. Speaking of cases, yep. There's a in some scenes the case has legs now. Yep. But sometimes it doesn't. So, yeah, and 
They have to get the, so they have to get the case to the top <laughs> of the mountain so the horse can press it. Because it's got the chilling in it. But it's like, well, okay, we'll break up and we'll go into different. You know, we'll all take a fake case. So there's a scene where Newt's assistant, yep. she goes to a, a place that that makes copies of things, and she says, "I need not a magical place." Was it not? I think it was a reg because she's, she's like, "Don't open this." I think ah. it was a regular. Okay. Taylor, like leather, leatherette man. Okay, and she says, "Okay, matters, I, I need six. I need half a dozen copies of this case." Yep. And then later in the later scenes, the the five there are five cases, one of which is the real case, and four of which are fake yeah. cases. And they all the all the main cast grab a case. Yeah. And then it's then they go into this city square and sort of play a shell game situation, yeah. and. The whole time I'm like, okay, well, if there's one real case and Newt's assistant went to get six fake cases, that means there's seven cases. So, and we've only seen five cases. Yeah. So at some point the other shoe's going to drop and and a character we've seen before might show up and, and you'd be like, oh, we've got all the cases. And then you go, oh, but there's two more cases and here's the big reveal. And actually we tricked you and I'd go, oh, that's very clever. But there was only ever five cases. <laughs> I guess the main guy, I guess the little leather worky guy could only make, no, it's, it, they, they make four cases. Like the next day or whatever. Yeah, yeah I guess Maybe he could only make magic. four cases. Yeah. Also, like if you need to get up that mountain. Fly? Fly, teleport. teleport, don't look the way that you do because they all know what you look like. Mm. Make the case look like something else. Sure. Like it's just strange. Like, and ma- It's not like magic doesn't work on that mountain because yeah. it does. It does. Because we're all sure shooting magic. each other with <laughs> magic. Yeah, but I just also, the, so the moment where I, I made this note in the cinema where the horse is picking the president. <laughs> Folks, I'm making a note in the cinema <laughs> to, to, to rubbish this film on a podcast. You can try and stop okay. me, but you no, don't want fine. to. Yeah. yeah. But it picks the president so fucking slow. Like, oh, my God, just get on with it. And while we're doing that, it's nice of, like, the Catherine Waterson character to not show up and then watch the horse pick the president on TV or whatever in America. Uh-huh. Could so that's like, that's Newt's on again, off again. Yes. Girlfriend. Who's been uh, mostly dropped from the franchise. And I looked into this because I'm like, what has happened here? Yeah, because they've sort She's of gone. She's the lead character in this. The, the, the t- anyway, I found an answer, but sorry, yes. go on. So Newt in the, in the, in the movies has... This this American aura is she, is she American? yeah 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 so she's an, an American magic cop and they nearly they bonded when they nearly got atomized in that acid pit yeah for filling in the wrong paperwork or whatever in the first movie <laughs> but then and then in the second one I think isn't she he, Newt has a like a he's he's in a photo with a woman and she thinks that he is. I don't know. Yeah, there, there's a there's she sees a newspaper article in which the photo has been taken with him and another woman, and she thinks that he is not taking their relationship seriously, so they break up or whatever. Oh, and nothing reason, and, okay. and nothing reason, and and a, like a like a posted note reason. Yeah, uh, and then I think they get back together, but in this one, yeah, she's just not in it. And there's also, but there's also the Newt has that his his assistant who yeah she's in love with him. Obviously, I think she was in the other ones. Maybe she was in the second one at least. Okay, I think. yeah, but in but then it's sort of. I kept thinking, okay, well, are they going to have this relationship happen, yeah. or is or is the 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 previous girlfriend going to show up and there'll be a love yeah. triangle or what have you? But it turns out nothing is the answer. It's, it's so strange for a number of reasons. First of all, uh, you know, there's the guy who there's a couple of people that join their group, and one of them I quite like, and the other one is supposed to be Zoe Kravitz's brother who died in the last one or whatever. Oh yes, uh huh. And it's just like, oh, is this guy going to? What's he going to do? One of them I don't, is a fake baby yeah, or something. I don't fucking know this guy. Mm. Like, I don't know these people, and I also don't remember who was in the last one. So if they're like, what's <laughs> this guy going to do? I don't, I don't mm. know. Yeah, I, and I don't care. Just to clarify, he's like, he shows up and he's like, uh, they they send him to to Grindelwald, and and he says, uh, Dumbledore sent me to to spy, to spy on, you. on you, but actually, I'm gonna, I'm a double agent. I'm gonna work with you, and then. Grindelwald's like, well, I'm going to take out your memories. And he's like, okay. And then at the end of the movie, you think that this guy is going to kill Newt and, and the good guys, but then he's like, haha, I'm actually going to zap the bad guys. All right. Yeah, exactly. Cool, man. Great. All right. Great. That's great. Yeah. It's good. I mean, it was 50-50 what you were going to do there. Maybe so. you shouldn't have killed Zoe Kravitz's character and that could have gone to her, do you know yep. what I mean, mm-hmm. at some point. But, yeah, so the reason that I think – Yes. Theorize that Catherine Waterson is not in this is because in 2020 she shared a Guardian article with the headline, trans women pose no threat to cis women but we pose a threat to them if we make them outcasts. So this was on her Instagram uh, story and she highlighted a section of the piece that read, sorry, you can't be a feminist if you're not for everyone's human, human rights, notably other women's human rights. Now, of course, this is pure speculation mm-hmm. but do you think maybe that's why she had a severely reduced role in this movie written by 
for the most part, <laughs> J.K. Rowling. Yes, I yeah. do. But and also why sh- it's also her sister is with like Hitler, right? Wizard Hitler, and oh, the guy. Her, oh, his sister's Queenie. Yeah, right. and her the guy that she loves is also trying to battle against Hitler, and she's just like. I just won't do any of that. Yeah, I reckon it doesn't probably, make, like narratively it doesn't make any yeah, sense. Yeah, this this will probably work out. And the you know the <laughs> sister I grew up with, she'll probably and they, be fine. Uh, they kind of hand wave. I mean, it I away. am a cop, and I yeah, could do something. Well, they hand wave it away by being like, "Well, now she's the head of the magical whatever." Well, why did she take that? Right? Like, cause, yeah, like oh, I could be rescuing my sister, but I uh, pay bump. Yeah, you know, exactly. I could be telling people what to do. <laughs> I could have a desk job right now. I could save my sister from evil. But I could no, I'll just. Just take this desk job, I reckon. Anyway, so they've got. Uh, you've probably heard about this in the other movies. I've never heard about anything. Okay, Go well ahead. then, let's see if you have. But the the story is that Dumbledore had this incredible wizarding duel with Grindelwald, right? Oh, and that's what we saw in this. No. Oh, this is a different. <laughs> thing. <laughs> so I th- I think this might be it. Because what we saw if, is if this is it, if this is all they're doing, okay, right? Okay, right. So it, I think it is because they've got to tie up the loose ends. Yes. So I'd not heard about this until just now, but I think mm, unless they want to leave the door, I, I reckon. Okay, this I reckon this is epic enough that you could say that it. I don't think it was epic. No, but I think it's epic enough. Yeah. That if you wanted to say this was their iconic epic duel, you could say it was. But if they if this is popular enough, they want to do a sequel, they could say that. And next it's vague one. enough where he falls off a thing and whatever yeah. at the end. But I don't think it. Lines up. I think it. I think if you had a vague idea of Harry Potter, you would go like, "Oh, that makes sense." You know, I guess that's yeah, right. right. Okay. But if you know anything about, if you dig slightly, it couldn't be mm. right. First of all, like when Dumbledore, do you remember when he fought Voldemort? And there's no. like big balls of water, and they're shooting fucking lightning yeah, yeah, at each yeah. other. And this is just like zappity zap zap. Yeah, zap, the ma- zap. I mean, th- this movie leads to a a couple of big magical battles, and I felt they were quite underwhelming in terms of. Again, it, it's just there. There is a scene where uh, I guess Newt and his brother and the new lady, the witch, and yep. a couple of other people. They're all in this. I didn't mind the new lady, yeah, the yeah, witch. Actually, I didn't care for a speech cadence. I thought it was up, up odd. Okay. It was weird and sing song. I didn't like it. Um, but there's well, I was a, swept up in the magic. Okay, that's great. Well, there's a moment where they're all there and Dumbledore's there and they're in this little city and they're doing their shell game with the different cases. And at one point, Dumbledore says to Jacob, "I'll oh, just FYI, your case doesn't have anything yeah. in it, so just do whatever. I don't care." Yeah. Why? And there's no payoff, right? Like I thought, oh, we had it, and he's just trying to like, yeah, calm right. him down. Yeah, yeah. But it's just full of magic pastries. Why even make four fake cases if one of them is? You and you're not going to tell anybody. Anybody, yeah. Or you got to tell them anyway that there's nothing in it, right? So, th- so they're all in this city. They're doing the shell game, and then all of a sudden, they're all set upon by the bad guys who are just like a generic, I guess, German magic cops, yeah. in in trench coats or whatever. And they're like, all right, time for the big magical battle. And it's mostly just like... Zap, zap, zap. Imagine, bang! Just imagine they all have like revolvers or whatever, exactly, or guns yeah. from that era, and they're just like, bang, bang, bang. There's a little bit of, you know, oh, I'll pick up some ornaments off a, off a cellar on the street and I'll hurl them at people. You're in a wall. I'll, I'll throw guy, a guy the, into a wall. The guy in a wall. But I mean... Yep. It wasn't... No. You see, you see more... You see more um, Diverse action in a Marvel movie, like in an Endgame, at least everybody's got. Yeah, and that was supposed to be an insult, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> what that's you right. just said. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah, that's right. You see, you see better action in one of the, you know, <laughs> in one of the biggest action movies of the last decade. Yeah, uh, no, but right, you know, it just they're supposed to be. One of the, come on, give it, summon some, summon some monsters, summon do a some, big snake, do some transmogrification, yeah. change a thing into another but thing with the Dumbledore. Grindelwald fight, fight Grindelwald. yeah. It just like the background goes all hazy. It's like, oh, it's just them. It's the Could be anywhere, just them, yeah. But it's like zap, 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 zap. Mm. And then it ends. And I just thought that was so strange for a number of reasons. So I looked up when these movies are set, right? Because okay. I, I need to get a, a mm. like a handle on when and how this is happening. Okay, great. So the first one was set in 1926. This, like the second one, was set around 1927, okay. right? Now, the great... Oh, so wi- World War II isn't for ages. Yeah, exactly. So the okay. Great Wizarding War, which is this huge, big, epic deal that's supposed to happen. Oh, so it's still on the way. I yeah. thought we were there. Like, I thought this must be the late 30s because yeah, right. I'd forgotten when everything anything was. That starts in 1938 and goes to 1945. Oh, so there's a decade in between. There's a decade in between, and then we have to see Grindelwald actually rise to power, create an army, fight a parallel World War II in the Wizarding Universe and yeah. then be defeated by Dumbledore in 1945. And are we not 
So we're not doing that, I, I guess. I don't know if we are. I think they've just <laughs> I think they've just sanded it off. I think they're just like Yeah. All right, and obviously you know, obviously the um, like we mentioned, Ezra Miller's character, uh, Credence. Yep. He's he was a troubled boy, and they're just like, mm, okay, we've we'll, we'll sorted you, so that's fine. Exactly. Um, Jacob and Queenie get back together, and there's a wedding, so yep. their their problems are all sorted. Exactly. Uh, uh, Dumbledore's magic um, thing, bro. Magic, magic thing where you can't Fight. act against uh, Grindelwald. That's that just broke. Yep. Now because, because because of a vague like a because of a, because they both. Had a, there's something about love and intention. Yeah, so that, so they can't act against one another. No, but Grindelwald was going to kill someone. Uh, I think a presidential candidate or Newt, possibly. Somebody. Or the guy? Was it the guy? The human man? Oh, no. I don't. I can't remember. Uh, no, it wasn't because no. So so Grindelwald wants to kill someone, and then Dumbledore wants to save him. Yes, and so they both zap at the same time, and because they're not acting against one another, they're both acting against a different person. That cancels. It out cancels the curse, out the yeah. cur- and it and it destroys the little locket, and so he's free again. So that's they've sealed that off. And that so that's was fine. wonderful, wasn't it? It was wonderful. I felt <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> and then, uh, so I, I I looked into what's next. Oh, uh, producer David Heyman said, "Well, we just have it." Well, well, well <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Deep sigh, drag on cigarette. Well, <laughs> we haven't yet started writing the next film, so we'll have to see. If I had my way, we'll definitely be going to Japan, which is what you do in the third movie. Yeah, it's that's too late. the rule. It's too to go late. to ancient Japan in the third Ninja movie. Turtles three <laughs> has set the precedent. It's too late to go to Japan in four. It's Citizens on patrol. I would love to see Japan. Jacob's going to get his wand working. Yeah. Also, what was that? What was the deal there? Well, they're giving him the wand. Jacob. Jacob it was res- the misdirect for for the Mads Mikkelsen, wasn't oh, it? Ah, to pretend he's going to be it. But I mean that. So so if people would have seen this in the trailer. Yeah. We, we haven't. You know, we haven't actually said whether this is the best movie ever or worst movie. Oh, ever. just hold, not just wait. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll people are intent to. But in a in a in a rare break from tradition, we're still we're spoiling this before the yeah. uh, the review. But basically, in the trailer and in the movie, Dumbledore gives Jacob the Muggle, the non magical man, the no madge. Yeah, gives him a wand, and it's a special wand. But it is it's, it's in, not magic in, at all. In the hands of a Muggle, it's just a bit of wood. I think it has no core. Don't they say? I don't know. I don't know. But then he's he's waving around. But there's a point where they're all in that room. They're all in a they're all at a fancy dinner all party. In that room. The good guys are there, and the 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 German magic cops are there, and Grindelwald is there. Yeah, and they're all having a fancy dinner because of pre- the presidential election or whatever. And Jacob is still upset because Queenie left him for Grindelwald's cause, and he goes up to him in the, at the table and he said, and he points the wand and he goes, "Ah, give, give me Queenie back!" Give and it. Then, and then Mads Mikkelsen says, "It's an assassin. He's going to assassinate me." And then the papers the next day, are like Muggle assassin, and he tried to kill Mads Mikkelsen, <laughs> the hero of the piece, but or he whatever. Had a wand. Yeah, <laughs> but you know he. It, it's not going to work, and it never works. No, like it never. It, there, there was no turn where you know he's he's like I love Queenie so much, and he and then magic happens because he believes yeah. in love. Or and I'd go, okay, that's that's fun, and you don't even really have to justify it. He, might, you know, at the end of the movie, they might go, well, that'll never work again, but it worked once because you love your your wife so much, or whatever. And I'd go, okay, that's fine. Yeah, but it just. Why would you wouldn't count that as an assassination attempt? It's like if a little kid walked up to the president with a with a water pistol. Yeah. And when I'm gonna shoot you, <laughs> you're gonna throw that kid in jail, are you? Yes. Good. Yeah. Terrific. But I don't I just realized that witch who met up with him, apparently she was in the last movie. Yeah. I maybe. don't remember that at all. Okay, right, great. Yeah. Um, but at the end he's just like, Well, I'm gonna keep this wand. Yeah. All right, great. Oh Dumbledore, can I keep this? I don't give a shit. Yeah, it's just to use a bit of wood. <laughs> You want to you want to you want to collect a stick in the park. You want to take that with you as well. You're like a little dog to me. You're nothing. I'm a wizard. You're a stupid little puppy. Oh, it's no good. Anyways, it's bad. It's it bad is bad. Movie, yeah. It's not good, is it? Yeah. It's also. I it's not I, worse than the last ones, I don't think. But it's 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 bad in different ways. Yeah, it's bad in different ways. And look, the whole thing, just everything about this franchise is just bad taste for me. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Mm-hmm. Like it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm sick of it. I'm uh-huh. sick of the discourse around, you know, the creator behind it. Yeah. I just think it's so like there's so much spite and hate and like the people in it, there's a lot of controversy that we have to kind of 
dance around or mention, like, have we mentioned this enough? Yeah. Are people aware of this? How much do we go into? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's, Can you still enjoy a thing even if the creator yeah. of it is terrible? I mean, not also if the thing is terrible. Yeah, well, that's you true. Exactly. That's like, has it grown? Does it grow beyond the people that, that yeah. make it? Do you know what I mean? Because I think often the case, you know, that, that can be true. But do you think this is it? Yes. If of this, because I think we're definitely doing the Harry Potter and his mates come back in the future one. Oh, do you think? Oh, you think that um, the half blood, not the half blood, whatever it is. Oh, the curse the of Charles. Show, yeah. Do you think that they might do a time jump to the modern era in this? If they were to do another one, do you think they would do time jump to whenever the Harry Potter movies are set? I think because they are obsessed with now. Now, obviously, the the reason this has gone the way it's gone, and it hasn't been a magical goof who loves magic animals so much yeah and he just goes on little adventures it's because they went this doesn't people love harry potter and they love going to hogwarts and they love dumbledore See, I don't even and they love all that true. stuff like you could make well maybe they perceive that people oh, that, love is, that is and true. i think they've, they've gone okay well and then we've got a we've got to have a scene in hogwarts and there's oh it's the slytherin kids and they're doing a prank or whatever yeah and they made you eat a, <laughs> eat a big piece of shit or whatever <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got you, you ate a big piece of shit. <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Anyway, they should put all, like, just tip them into a bin. All those kids in that yeah. house. Oh, you're in Slytherin? That's the trap door opens That's up. That's right, you, yeah. Now you're, you're dead. Into, you fall into a dragon's Now you're mouth. dead. What do you think about that? <laughs> eh? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, look, so I think, I, look, I don't know. I don't think this is going to do well. Yeah. And there, it's been diminishing returns for these new mm. ones. There's no... Love for any of this built up. Yeah. Uh, there's also obviously the controversy just surrounding all of it. I can't imagine them going, let's tackle World War II and we'll make it set in <laughs> yeah. Japan also. Yeah. Which really... also <laughs> were the villains in World War II. Now, I think that, uh, you know, there's there's some, you know, there's there's some certainly some issues to negotiate here, but I think with a deft touch, we yeah. can really How solve all this. How do we do? This. Hiroshima in the wizarding world. Mm, yeah. How well, we let's, take, <laughs> let's take some cues from the Eternals that did it really well <laughs> and didn't make people go, oh, that's a bit weird. Yeah, why did you do that? Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's a bad movie, worst movie ever. Worst movie ever, yeah. Yep, yeah. and hopefully we're done with this. Yeah. Which is a shame, I think. It's just, just a shame all around. It really you know? is, yeah. It's a shame yeah. all around. I think, there was, again, like I think there was a lot of potential for that. Yep. Just a fun Indiana Jones-style romp and people would... Yeah. I had to do all the stuff they did in this and the previous ones, and didn't it's, they? It's pretty boring. <laughs> yeah. Pretty kind of. Yeah. And what happened to those last two cases? We'll never know. We'll never know. Yeah. Mm. Fuck, all right. Next segment, Mason. All right, here we go. What's it called, though? It's called What We Readin'. Yep. What We Gonna Read. I love having the wind taken out of my sails. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like I'm the one who Slytherin gave me a big piece of shit to eat. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you gobbled it down with glee. And then I went, oh, no, that was a big piece of shit. And I ate it all in one go and I wish I had more. (laughs) Slytherin boys, do you have some more? Because I ate it all in one go, actually, and I need need more. that's not what happened. Wow. Opposite. What's it tied for? Oh, what we read and what we're going to read. There we go. I'm doing the thing. Westworld. Very nice. This is the segment of the show where we look at each other and we go, what have you been up to? What have you been, what have you been up been to? Doing? What have you been doing behind my back? What are you doing? You dog. You look at my wife. You know, that kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> it should be called the you looking at my wife, this segment. No, 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 You look at my wife. You dog. No, just no, it's all right. That's my missus. My missus you're looking at. Yep. You got something to say, you stare at my face. Anyway, Mason, what have you been doing? Uh, well, I haven't been doing much. Whose wife have you been looking at this week? I haven't been looking at anybody's wife, I don't think. No way to have. <laughs> no, Go on. No, uh, well, I haven't been watching a lot of uh, TV or movies because the Melbourne International Comedy Festival Yes, is yes, on. yes. Uh, I hope to see people tonight as we're recording at the... Um, mm. Do go on a live show. That's right, you're in. I'm in. But also I've just been seeing a lot of shows at the Comedy Festival, so there are still a couple of weeks to go. If you are in Melbourne, I am. Uh, please pop in. I've got some recommendations for oh, people. Oh, I love it. Here we if go. If you want to see just some straight-up very good stand-up comedy, I do. you should see Peter Jones, the most generic name in comedy, or maybe in the world, but tremendous stand-up comedy. Just just, just bangers. Just bangers just straight bang, one just, after the other, would you say? 55 minutes of bangers, just just great jokes. Wow, 55 couldn't, couldn't even hit the hour, huh? That's right. 
Uh, also, Greg Larson is great. Oh, yes. Uh, you might have seen him on the television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, Laura Davis, uh, who is... Uh, oh, Claire saw that show, said it was incredible. She loved it, yeah. yeah. Laura Davis is, is great, and she's the um, best show she's ever done, I think. She's wow. been doing it for ages, uh, and I think people should get tickets and uh, see that show. Uh, it's very... Very good, very... Do you think before it gets big and blows up? Yes. Great. Uh, that's really good. Uh, Lauren Bonner, who I've recommended before, does oh, great yes, stand-up yes, as have. well. Uh, and if you want to see some maybe some sketch comedy, uh, you should see Annie and Lena, which is a two-person sketch oh, comedy yes. show, just a bunch of um, sort of uh, just just fun, in uh, not not really connected sketches, but just like a fun... Fun, silly just stuff. Just a bunch of fun, silly stuff, which is really good, very, very fun, very enjoyable. Uh, but it, and if you want to see uh, a, a sketch comedy show that's a very silly kind of space opera, you should see the new Chimp Cop show oh, yes, called that's The Poster right. Syndrome, which is a very it's it's aliens, but it's the Naked Gun. So oh should, right, gotcha, yeah, terrific stuff. It's very good, and they're back. They haven't they've been on hiatus for they a few been years, on haven't hiatus, they? Yes. So there you uh, go. And also, I'd highly recommend. Oh, two of the filthy casual guys are in that. Oh by yes, the that's way, true. Just yes. To, <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, I would recommend if you want to uh, go out there, buy some tickets, see some shows. Because maybe you're like, oh, I'll just wait till next week. Maybe uh, the show you want to see, the act got COVID. That's right. And you, you can't see him. And then, well, the show's a Well, there's a big flood now. and they can't get out of their hometown, Will Anderson. Will but Anderson, He got, he got yeah. out of his hometown. He's doing his show. Apparently yeah, that's incredible. true. Anyway, so, yeah. see, all those, see all those names. Terrific. Big fan. Um, and I think maybe this week I'm going to watch Severance. Oh, the, I, the well, I watched all of Severance. What do you think of Severance? Loved it, Mason. Yeah. Loved it. I was like this. Oh, this is good. I couldn't even hear it because I kept yelling <laughs> things like that. That's that incredible, effect. James. Yeah. Now you're, wow. do, you, do you have Apple TV Plus? No, I'll have to get Apple TV Plus. I'll have to get another streaming service. Ah, you idiot. That's <laughs> good, though. It's worth it. There's a bunch of good stuff on Apple. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Mason, I read uh, one of Jeff Lemire's latest uh, comics. It's Go two on. issues. It's called Little Monsters. <laughs> so it's the last children on Earth, right? And they're living in an abandoned, ruined city, like a New York-esque. Okay. I can't remember which All city. Right. And here's the thing. Can they get a New York slice? No, no, they can't, Mason, wow. because they're just doing kids stuff. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, oh, we've, we've been doing the same stuff for ages now, for hundreds of years. And it's like, wait a minute. Anyway, it turns out that they're all vampires, <gasps> all little children vampires. Then anyway, anyway, an arrival of a stranger kind of sets things off in motion. Mm-hmm. So they're waiting for this, like, for somebody to come back. Oh. They mention this person of like, yeah, he's going to come back or whatever. And, and it's a like, New it's York a, slice off yeah, him. Yeah, exactly. It's been 100 years. What's going on? Anyway, uh, again, only been two, but... uh. I mean, it's Jeff Lemire. He's, he's one of the best. Normally m- makes a good comic <laughs> it's book. It's true, yeah. 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 I can't think of a bad one, and this one is a good one. There you go. As of so far, who yeah, knows? Yeah, maybe, yeah. It, yeah. maybe it Harry Potter's off a cliff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, also, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I recommended a bunch of comedy festival stuff, and I saw it all, and very good. Except for Michael Williams' show, which is coming up next week. I which think. you don't recommend. No. Yeah, okay. Heavens cool. no. <laughs> Heavens no. No, no. Just you're joking though, aren't you? I am joking. I think it will be very terrific, good, but Thank I haven't you. seen it yet because it is not. Now I'm not, I'm not joking right now though. Go on. Do you have a letters theme song? for I do us? have a letters theme song ready to go. Terrific. And I'm gonna I'm not gonna break with tradition. I'm gonna do the classic standard letters theme. Okay. Which goes like this. The classic one was the letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. I know they're here right now. We're gonna do letters. I thought you were going to do a prank then. No, 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 no. Very good. No, well, no, no, no. good. No pranks here. Too you, late in the hour for pranks. It's true. If you do want to reach the show, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter or Weekly Planet Pod at gmail.com. Mason, do you, have a, do you have a big Gmail for us? I'm going to get a big Gmail right now, actually. I would love to hear about it. Okay. Uh, this is from Daniel. Hello, Daniel. My annual Harry Potter film review question mark. Oh, yes. Hello, chaps. After getting home from uh, the latest Fantastic Beast film, I was wondering if you plan on reviewing the next couple of Harry Potter films anytime soon. Keeping your current schedule, we're due a couple this year and the final instalment sometime in 2024. In the meantime, if you could cast the half a Brickyamos spell on me to help me forget that Fantastic Beasts exist, then that would be great. We can't help you. That's from Dan in Essex. You're going to have mm. to hit yourself in the head with a brick. That's true. Uh, yeah, I don't know. when we, Are we going to do that? Might as well round them off. Yeah, we'll round them off. But I think next week we want to do maybe everything all at once is happening all the time. Mm. And maybe Sonic 2, which was out this and week. And maybe The Lost City, which maybe is the also Lost City. Out. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, we should do it. We'll get to them. Just yeah. get it done. Get it Just done. Just get it done. Yeah. Yeah. I would also be interested to know, if you want to tweet at us, what you would like us to do next week. There, there are a lot, surprisingly large amount of options out there, I think. I agree. So. Maybe we'll do a little bit of everything. Also, like, maybe buy tickets to, like, three movies and see five, see ten minutes of each of them, of them yeah. and then leave. Okay, great. Exactly. Review based on those. Did you know I have a tweet here from Fleazy? 
I did know that, yeah. Oh, you did? Cool. But do you know what's in the tweet? Yeah, but you tell me. Okay. Maybe Uh, you don't know. I'll check if I know. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Hey, James and Meso. Love the show. It helps me get through all my long days of work. I've been dying to know if you guys will talk about Better Call Saul's final season, which starts April 18th. It's the final to the Burraba universe. So I've uh, I've been super hype. Me too. Oh, uh, apparently um, we're going to get some Jesse and uh, Walter Walter White turning oh, up in it at my some goodness. point as well. Okay. Um, no, I'm very much looking forward to that. I don't know if we'll do like a dedicated episode. Maybe we will. Well, I am many seasons behind. Well, so. you better get caught up quick, bitch. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah. That's from the show. That's from the show. Mm, yeah. Very good. Okay. Just to be clear, I also meant it. It wasn't just a joke. No, I understand. Yeah. That's from our you show. Like, when yeah. I say that's from the show, I meant that's from our show. <laughs> you like Better Call Saul, right? Yeah, but I'm not. I'm, I'm yeah. seasons behind. So. I, I think it's still very, I, I think it's as good. Mm. Yeah. Let's see how it wraps up. Yes. It's a good prequel. Who knew? Mm. What's next, Mason? Here's an of, email wow. from Neil. Hello, Neil. It says, Mark Commode meets the Weekly Planet. Oh, I did see this, yes. Hey, guys. Thought you'd be interested to know that the great UK film critic Mark Commode is now aware of the pod's existence. Yes. On the most recent episode of his podcast, Commode on Film, reviewing the Batman. Hmm, bit, bit behind, this guy. I know. Catch up, mate. Mm-hmm. Co-host Jack Howard brought up an excellent podcast called Mr. Sunday Movies. I mean... Yes. Also inaccurate. So they're behind no, the no, eight no. ball well, and all Jack stuff. Howard, uh, yes. we follow each other on Twitter. He ah. does a number of things. He's a filmmaker and he's a YouTuber and he does podcasts and all these kinds of things. And Komoot has a couple of uh, podcasts. He does another one through BBC, mm-hmm. which I've been listening to for like over a decade. But I, I've tried not to listen to it. I don't listen to it before I talk about movies because I'll just be like, yeah, the thing he said. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Mark Komoot said fantastic yeah. piece was good. But and and Jack Howard's great, is okay. really well. Nice Jack guy. Howard brought us up and explained the nickname Robat Bat and Bat, yeah. to which Commode simply responded, "Very good." So <laughs> yes. I don't have any. I don't have any. Um, I, no, I, they have real film opinions. You yeah, know, we yeah, yeah. we just mm. kind of like spin our wheels until yeah. it's an hour and a half. That's true. I know. Yeah. He says, "I know James has mentioned being a fan of his in the past and thought this was a neat bit of crossover." Cheers, guys from Neil. That was cool. Yeah. No, I, I someone tweeted me that, and, and for a long cool. time, uh, he was on. Mark Commode was on a podcast called The Commode and Mayo. Yeah, he still does it. That's what I'm talking about. The Weekly Mayo? Oh, that one. I don't know about that okay, one. Okay, because there yeah. used to be one every time. He does the Commode Mayo if you'd one, search, yeah. If you searched Weekly, it would yeah. come up with the Weekly Mayo every time. Oh. I'm like, oh, that son of a bitch. You know, there's like a... People w- think Mayo is more important, important than... There's a Weekly Planet, like, climate yeah, I know. change newsletter mm-hmm. website. So I get Google alerts every now and then. It's like, yeah. you've been mentioned. I'm like, ah, it's just climate disaster shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, 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 if I were them, like... You probably should have Googled it because that's probably important. Yeah, and I we don't want to. We don't want to step on that. Little little fun fact: I actually Googled the Weekly Planet before we named the podcast the Weekly Planet. That's so right. I, and now uh, we're the we're winners, aren't we? Yeah, we're like the second or third most popular podcast called the Weekly Planet, which I think is nice. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. And we're down, like we went down a spot. But oh that's still yeah, good. yeah, yeah. We're yeah. still in the top four. Mm. So that's really good. Got one from DVD Mike here, Mason. I'm ready. He says, Martin Campbell has always been a massive hit and misdirector. For every Zorro, there's a second Zorro. For every <laughs> No Escape, there is Congo. Some Escape. Uh, that's right. And I, I like, ver- he wrote, and I like Vertical Limit. I also, we saw Vertical Limit in cinemas. I remember, yeah. And boy, we had a good and great time with it, didn't that, we? That, if I recall, was a movie in which numerous people in the audience would just yell stuff <laughs> at, the, at the screen and everybody would just laugh and Everybody just along. had a really good Having time. Having a great time. Just people we knew, people we didn't know. No, yeah, people in there just very unusual experience. Yeah, yeah. So, um, did you watch the Protege last year? Because he did that. Oh, the Protege with Michael Keaton and yeah. um, some other people. I did see that. Yeah, okay. Maggie Q. Yeah, Maggie Q was in that. Yeah, there's also a movie called Memory this year with Liam Neeson, which is out in April. Oh, so I'm like, and it's about. When Alex, presumably Liam Neeson, an expert assassin, refuses to complete job for a dangerous criminal organization, he becomes a target. Whoa. FBI agent and Mexican intelligence are brought to investigate a trail of bodies, leading them closer to Alex. With the crime syndicate and FBI in hot pursuit, Alex has the skills to stay ahead except for one thing. He's struggling with memory loss. It's the memory loss year, Mason. It sure is. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, affecting his every move, Alex must question his action and whom he can ultimately trust. Isn't that bizarre? He's already done a memory loss one, didn't he? Do yeah, right. unknown. Unknown was the one where he thought he had a wife and it was a fake wife oh, or yeah. something. Yeah, I mean, but well, I mean, certain James, certain auteurs definitely have, you know, yeah, uh, you know, their their themes that they come to often. You know, sometimes it's always like, uh, 
boy, I didn't, I didn't think uh, my divorce affected my, uh, you know, my my cinematic output. But then it's like three movies called I Hate My Wife. <laughs> I love the I Hate My Wife trilogy. Yeah, the I Hate My Wife trilogy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're just getting, they're just leaning further and further away from each other on the posters. But maybe one of them's <laughs> trying to pull them back. In, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. nice, nice, yeah. nice. Anyway, what's next? Ah, uh, great question. Is it anything? There's, a, there's, an, there's an email from Greg. Okay, Greg. Uh, another tragedy on Monthbius. Oh, no. Just to be clear, though, Monthbius is over because you over vetoed it. Yeah. Not because people, the people don't love Monthbius because no you vetoed it. No one's suggesting that. Uh, Greg says, hey, guys, I was driving at me and my girlfriend, who I got into the podcast back home from university, nice. listening to the latest podcast when the tyre in my car exploded. <sighs> I assume the tyre on on like one of the wheels. Not the spare. Not the spare exploded. I mean, that would still be a give That'd you a bit of a That would certainly be shocking, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, luckily, we were both fine and stopped at a nearby servo and waited an hour for the roadside assistance to come. And your podcast helped us pass the time while we waited. Thanks for the laughs and a thing to pass the time. Did you, do one, the earbud, did you do one earbud each? Oh, that's a great point. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. Do people still do one earbud each? Probably. It's easier than ever now. Yeah, you, it's true. Because you can, they're, it's, they're wireless. Yeah. But that's not as like... You know, that's where's that, the communal nature. You could be on yeah. the opposite sides of a bus. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. where's mm-hmm. the communal nature of the one earbud? Yes. Yeah. Just now I would be... never put someone else's earbuds in my ear. They're like, gross? do you want to listen? I'm like, get, get away from. Do you want me. me to listen to your gross earwax? No, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's next, Mason? That's the whole show, I think. Well, I got one more quickly tweet. from Scott Wilkinson, who says, "My wonderful wife surprised me today." By handing me over the I Hate My Wife trilogy on DVD. No, wow. by texting me my new username and password to bigsandwich.co, uh, at Mr. Sunday Movies, at Wikipedia Brown, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Uh, with gas at $4 a gallon, I'm going to go bankrupt driving around and <laughs> listening. Uh, yeah, look, uh, that's much appreciated. Thank you to both you and your wife. Uh, but yeah, you don't, you don't have to chip in a goddamn thing. That's very if true. You, if you do not have to, but we do appreciate any and all support that we get. And we'll never stop talking about the Fantastic Beasts movies. That's right. Every single one of them. No matter how problematic the creator got and no matter how bad the movies get. <laughs> we just want to see little waistcoats. Mm, that's true. All right. What's next, Mason? James, that is the whole show. So, wow. thank, folks, thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you for subscribing. No, thank you for telling your friends all about the podcast. I am subscribed, actually. Are you? Good yeah, for you. on iTunes. Oh, yeah. uh, thank you for telling your friends about it. Thank you for leaving a five-star review on the podcast platform of your choice. Helps us, helps, it helps us get it get it in front of other people and they say, oh, what's this? It'd be like recommended for you. Okay, don't mind huh? if I do. Huh? I'll give this huh? a try. Huh? Are, they, are they leaping huh? over? Are they vaulting something? Are they yeah. vaulting a, yeah, a vaulting right. horse? Huh? They're, doing a, um, they're doing hurdles together. That's great. Yeah. Why don't you give this a listen to? I've got the hiccups as well. Hiccups, yeah. Oh, no. And yeah, put this one headphone in and we'll run this track <laughs> together. Yeah. Anyway, go That's on. That's beautiful. Thanks. Do you have any of those five star reviews there? Oh, that shit, Mason. That's what you were saying. Yeah, yes. I do. Got one here from Bondathon who says. If extensive discussions about hat culture is what you're looking for, look no further. Listen to two best friends tell you everything you need to know about hats. From Jonathan Burke. Did we talk about hats? Maybe a while ago. Probably. Remember, didn't. I think we also said just trick people into a thing that they like. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you love hats, yeah, yeah. This is from uh, this is someone one from John who says been listening for th- uh, since episode three or four. Started off not really liking comic book movies, but James and May so have such good insight and banter back and forth. I eventually began to see things I hadn't seen before and gained interest in these types of movies and entertainment. Daniel Craig Craig Bond was another body of work I wasn't familiar with. The Caravan of Garbage sparked my interest, so recently I made my way along with my wife to watch all the Daniel Craig and Bond movies over the course of a week and last night we saw No Time to Die by far the best Bond movie I've seen I definitely think Craig's Bond would have ab- would absolutely murder all the other Bonds if they were to fight <laughs> at their primes on an American football field hands down anyways it was great to be in the theatres again and we really enjoyed ourselves thank you gents for bringing the podcast out and sharing your insights over the years peace John from Washington. Well, you are That's very landlocked, John. Welcome, folks. If you want to get into contact with us, you can go to Weekly Planet Pod at Gmail, at Facebook, at Twitter, at Bandcamp. You can go to the uh, Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. If you want to talk about the movie Memory with Liam Neeson. Oh, my good. You could if you want to. Yeah. Uh, you also go to the uh, Weekly Planet Pod subreddit and Discord. Thank you to all the, the admins and moderators who, who get in there and keep the peace. Not that you need to, because it's a very they're all very friendly, lovely places to talk about pop culture and podcasts. We or you're out time. also. Or you're out. We'll boo you very quickly. That's right. We might get a few this week. Uh, what happened to freedom of speech? Get fucked. <laughs>
That's what happened to it. And we don't believe in freedom of speech. And you're welcome. Also, Australia has freedom of speech because we got the slap of Will Smith uncensored, unlike everywhere else in the That's world. That's right. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, you excited but- for the election, Mason? No. Me neither. Yeah. I remember having a full meltdown last time. That's great. <laughs> it's great for everyone. Uh, folks. Uh, if you want to follow some other fine people, you can follow our friend Rob Collings, who edits this podcast, who edits our uh, Hawk Talk Talk I oh month night God, recaps. Does he ever. He's doing he's doing all sorts of stuff. He sees all and he knows all. It's Rob Collings. He's at Raw Collings on Twitter. He is at the Weekly Planet on Twitter. You can also follow me on Twitter at Wikipedia Brown I on can. Instagram at Nick Meso. Uh, you can follow James at Mister Sunday Movies. He's everywhere. If you want to support the show, yeah, do you? you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. You can chuck in a buck. You can chuck in any amount you wish. You can chuck in 50 cents. You can chuck in $5,000 trillion if you want. But, I mean, it's whatever you wouldn't miss. So exactly. If so if you're a big-time millionaire. I am. You want to you put some money in there? Me? Yeah. No, I want the money. That's how you become a millionaire. Oh, you what are be, you, stupid? You want to become a bigger-time millionaire. Yeah, right? exactly. Okay, I can respect that. I want that. to buy one of those super yachts. Yeah, nice. And then, like... Right? Crash it? Yeah, block up a canal. Yeah. And ruin everybody's <laughs> Nice, but you're summer. having a great time in the super yacht because it's entirely self-contained. I don't give a Until shit. Until there's a mutiny and they kill you. A oh, what? Your staff, your staff will what? kill you. Yeah, yeah, they said they were going to. No, I'm rich. They can't do that. Mm, they're going to, though. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at least I'll always have the movie Memory with Liam Neeson. Ah, oh, they chucked it into the water. They chucked it in the Suez Canal. This is bullshit, yeah, man. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, yeah. But you, <laughs> you should have learned. You got to. What happened to respect? You know what I mean? point, yeah. Yeah. You know what happened the other day? Go on. The street in my house? Yes. Uh, in the strip of shops, two people tried to get in the same car park. Two old guys. Oh, oh had that end. And guess who came out to, to like to shout and, and like and, and like kind of mediate? You? More old white guys. I was going to say. It was crazy. That's yeah. crazy, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, it'd be, a, it'd be a wild time if you stepped in to mediate. Too angry, man. Well, there's part of me that wants to come in and just be like, just, just done. Grow up. Talking Grow nonsense. Up. Just being like. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Very fun. That's good stuff. Yeah. Anyway, uh, folks, just leave the spot. Who cares? You don't right, need to find like, another. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Just park over there and walk two hundred meters. Yeah. That's fine. Oh, you can also sign up at bigsandwich.co. I'd love to. Uh, early uh, early podcasts and early videos and bonus podcasts and movie yep. commentaries and all kinds of stuff. Right. We're having a great time. Trying to think this week uh, because we did the Phantom Menace video game. I'm just going to pull up, put up early the full unedited. Whoa! Yeah, it's like 30 minutes of us playing through the Phantom Menace video game. Oh wow! I'm just going to chuck it up there. It seems to flow pretty well. Okay. Obviously, it'll be edited down for the mm. YouTube, but that's going to. I think I'll, I'll put it up now. So if you if you're hearing this, it's it's, it's up already there up. Now. My yeah. goodness. Yeah. Um. I'm um, what, Mason? That's the whole thing. But also, folks, we've got some T-shirts on tpublic.com. You just search for The Weekly Planet. Uh, you can also thank the Brute and the Basilisk and Rackham for all our musical themes. I'm going to thank them every day of my life. Next week, some movies, probably. At least yeah, one some, movie at least we're going to talk movie. about. Yeah, 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 maybe something else. Yeah, yeah nice. Maybe Snake Eyes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, damn it. What? We didn't do Snake Eyes, but we can. Shit, you're right. Anyway, that's yeah. okay. Maybe next week we'll just have more thoughts about Secrets of Dumbledore. I bet I don't. I bet I forget <laughs> everything about this. <laughs> I bet I think about it every day. He had a brother, and his brother had a son, and then they wrote them all out of the movie, I think. I thought his brother was going to be a muggle, but then he wasn't a muggle. He was no, just... his brother's in the sequel, the oh. original Harry Potter movies. Oh. And he's like, I hate my brother because he killed our sister. Yeah, right, but right. it didn't feel like they hated each other here, what I think. What happened to the sister then? She got zapped in a big wizarding fight because she, she was a big cloud oh. of smoke that got angry. Oh, did was she ever an actor? Like, were they, did they ever, no, was I think she they always just, a cloud of smoke? I think they just cast a, a picture in the original movies, and then that picture was in... Oh, I did see that picture on the wall. Yeah, I think that was in the other movies. Okay, that... No, okay, right. It's my dream to be a picture in a Harry Potter movie. Oh, yeah? Just a picture. And they have to keep using it. Wow. (laughs) In all the other movies. (laughs) Terrific. All right, thanks, everybody. Oh, Sonic. Anyway, grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.